it actually touches, there's a short circuit and you see a little spark and the whole thing stops. What you see here is a fairly large steel washer, about two and a half inches in diameter, and it has a depression, a sort of a shape that's been cut into it, about halfway through the thickness. If you look closely, it kind of looks like the shape of a peace sign, although unfortunately fairly blurry. How did I do that? Here you can see where the peace sign shape came from. This is a cheap earring that I got at the mall. It's probably made out of some kind of a tin alloy, and I've soldered it to the end of a piece of copper pipe and painted the outside red. Although the peace sign shape in the steel is kind of blurry, you can see how these two fit together, showing how the tin managed to cut a shape into the steel. Given the tin is much softer than steel and has a lower melting point, you might wonder, how exactly did I do that? I couldn't use it to grind away the steel, I couldn't use it to melt or burn away the steel. The answer is what's called electrochemical machining. This sort of Frankenstein-like apparatus is a very simple home shop version of electrochemical machining. The earring bit is held in the chuck of the drill press so that I can move it up and down slowly into the steel washer, which is clamped just below. Now, we're not gonna turn on the drill press. We're just using it to move the bit up and down. Flowing through the copper pipe and out around the earring bit is a solution of salt water, which is being pumped from a pan below. Clamped to both the steel washer and the earring bit are wires coming from a battery charger, which are going to supply about 12 volts DC. The idea then is to move the bit so that it almost, but not quite, touches the steel. If it actually touches, there's a short circuit and you see a little spark and the whole thing stops. When the earring is just the right distance away from the steel, maybe a couple of thousandths of an inch, the electric current that's flowing between the earring and the steel eats away the steel selectively. It depends on the direction that the current's flowing. If we ran it in the other direction, it would eat the earring and leave the steel in place. This is basically like electroplating, except running in reverse. Instead of adding metal onto a surface like you would when you're electroplating, instead we're taking it away by running the current in the opposite direction. When you look closely, you can see little bubbles forming around as the water is flowing through. That's actually the water being split into hydrogen and oxygen, which is a relatively harmless side effect of the electric current. The reason the shape came out so blurry is because I was not able to control the distance very carefully and the insulation around the outside of my bit was not very good, so current tended to flow out to the sides instead of only straight up and down the way it was supposed to. When this is done properly using industrial equipment that has automatic feedback loops and better made bits, you can actually machine shapes that are extremely precise, and because the bit never physically touches the workpiece, there's no limit to how delicate or fine the structures can be and one can actually make shapes this way that are basically impossible to machine in any other way.